Hello everyone, this is Trip Corbin with EGIS Associates. I want to take a minute and talk about shapefiles and what they are. They are a very common format within the GIS industry, so it's important if you're using them that you really kind of understand what it is you're, you're using. So we want to make sure we take some time to go through those. So we'll go through and, and talk about what a shapefile actually is. Um, then we'll get into how we can use shapefiles within ArcGIS, and then lastly, we'll look at what really makes up uh, a shapefile. What's that structure uh, that they have? So what is a shapefile? Well, a shapefile stores vector data. That means it stores points, lines, or polygons. And within the way shapefiles are set up, they're going to store a single feature class, which means it's going to store a single type, meaning it's going to be a point shape file, or it's going to be a line shape file, or it's going to be a polygon shape file. Within a single shape file, you cannot mix and match those feature types. It's, it's got to be all one type. Um, the nice thing about shape files, it makes them a little bit more versatile, is that they are usable by multiple applications. There's a large number of GIS and GPS apps that can read in uh, shape files, display them, edit them, and create them, import, export them, which makes the, this a very versatile storage uh, format. Part of the confusion that comes in when people uh, use shapefiles is the fact that they do consist of multiple files, right? That there is more than one file, even though it's called a shapefile. And we, we see that does lead to a lot of confusion, especially if we're trying to share our data with someone else. Like we're trying to email a shapefile over to somebody. We often don't realize that there's several files we need to, to pick uh, and send at the same time, which, which leads to, to some confusion. Now within the ArcGIS realm, we can do a lot with a shapefile. We can display the shapefile, edit the shapefile, import and export shapefiles uh, to and from other formats. So we can import a shapefile into a geodatabase. We can export a shapefile to a AutoCAD format like DWG or DXF. We can even export a shapefile out to an Excel spreadsheet. So uh, again, capabilities there. All of our analysis tools in ArcGIS, be it ArcMap, Arc Catalog, ArcGIS Pro, uh, and so on, we can, we can use on a shapefile, right? So our buffers, unions, intersect, and, and so on are available to us. We also have the ability to share that shapefile with others. Uh, because it is file-based, and we'll look at the file structure in just a moment, but because it's file-based, uh, it's pretty easy to zip those together and email them to somebody. We can also publish them as a uh, downloadable file to ArcGIS Online or our portal for ArcGIS. Uh, and we now have the flexibility to actually publish the shapefile out as a web service. And this is becoming a more common practice within GIS where we're publishing this data out as a service that can be digested into a web application, a mobile application, as well as a desktop applications so that we can display them in web maps and uh, edit the features uh, within the shapefile using a mobile application such as ArcGIS Collector and so on. So we see that a lot. And you can see this demonstrated here in uh, ArcGIS Pro, where I have a map that I've created. Uh, within it, I have multiple shape files that are being displayed. So even though a single shape file can only contain either points or lines or polygons, what we do is within a single map, we're going to bring in multiple shape files as layers so we can display them at uh, our multiple shape files at one time. And you see that I've got roads down here with my streets, so you can see the different makeup being displayed based off of information associated with the shapefile. You can see my railroads 
in here, another shape file. That would be a line shape file. We can see railroad junctions where the different rail lines come together or end, uh, identified as points in there. And then the county boundary here is the line running through the middle. That's actually a polygon, as you can see over here in the contents pane. So we've got examples of points, line, and polygon shape files uh, in here. And they're all being displayed. And we can use, uh, do multiple things. So if I go to my map tab here and click on my explore tool, yes, I can come in and click on a feature in the map, and it's going to pop up additional information about this specific railroad junction I, I clicked on. Or if I click on one of these streets, the information associated with the streets. And that is something that if you're not familiar with GIS, you need to remember is that uh, most all geo GIS formats consist of two components, a spatial component and an attribute component. And you can see that this is in the map being displayed as the spatial component. And if, if I right click on one of the uh, layers referencing a shapefile here, I can open the attribute table. So here's additional information about the features that are being displayed, right? The name, the class uh, of the river in this case, right? See that. Now what I was mentioning about being multiple files, you'll see over here in my catalog pane, I have several shapefiles, and the way ArcGIS displays shapefiles, you'll notice they have these green icons. So we have polygon shapefile there, a line shapefile, and a point shapefile there. But you'll also see that it's just displaying the SHP file, and this is where confusion sets in, right? All we see here is the SHP. However, if I go to my file explorer, to the location where these files are at, so you can see over here, EGIS Alabama folder, which is where I'm at here, right? So there's that Alabama County, right? The county limits shape file that we were looking at there. See, there's a DBF, a PRJ, SBN, SBX, SHP, uh, several lock files that are created because I'm viewing it in here. And then uh, an XML and an SHX. So all of these files here make up one single shape file. And we'll talk more about the purposes of these in a minute. But if I were to uh, email the shapefile to somebody, I'd have to make sure I grabbed all of these files together to, to email. Just sending them the SHP here is not going to get them a usable data set. Okay? I've got to include uh, all of the files that are required for that shapefile, which again is where that confusion tends to, to come in because we only see the SHP over, over here. Uh, but continue on, I so said we can obviously display if I want to edit the data. Click here, I can go to create features, and you can see I've got feature templates for creating new features within that shape file. Okay? If I wanted to create a new road or a new river, a new railroad, click on these and draw those into uh, the, the screen. I also have the ability to uh, edit data Right, so I can come in here, if I scroll to the bottom, you'll see add new row, so I can add records within the attribute table for the shape file. But I'm not just limited to editing the, the rows uh, in here. By the way, each one of these rows references a feature up here in the, the map, right? So if I were to select River. Let's make sure I have the right river selectable. I don't want to select the county anymore. Go back, clear that selection, and again select that river. Right, you can see I have one of 105 selected. If I scroll through the table here, you can see this is. Pond Creek is the one I had selected. It's highlighted in blue. So again, the each row here represents a feature displayed up here in the map. But getting back to what I was saying is I can also update the schema for the shapefile. That means I can change the structure. I can add new fields. I can delete fields um, and so on from the, the shapefile. So not, 
not just editing the data it already contains, but adding so I can increase the amount of data uh, that is associated with the shape file, especially within the attribute table. Okay. So you get the, the idea of the things that are there. Of course, I can get into my analysis tools here. So all of the tools, spatial join, clip, intersect, union, buffer, uh, and so on within the ArcGIS platform will work with shapefiles, including these ready-to-use tools that come from ArcGIS Online for generating profiles uh, for elevational data, assuming you have elevational data, finding the closest facility, generating service areas, and so on. All of these will work with shapefiles. So, again, very flexible. So with that, what are the files that make up a shapefile and what is their, their purpose? Well, in a minimum, there are three required files for a shapefile, the SHP, the DBF, and the SHX. So you have to have those three files at a minimum to have a working shapefile. The SHP stores that geometry, that vector data, the points, lines, and polygons that you see displayed in the map are stored in that SHP file. The DBF is the attribute, so that table that I opened up. All of that information was stored in the DBF file. That's a, a DBase table, it's an old database type, uh, goes back to I think 70s, 80s um, time frame there. So we have that. And then the SHX is the index that we use to tie all of those, uh, the other two files together. It's a, what allows me when I select the feature in the map to know which record needs to be displayed and the table is selected and vice versa. So uh, it's kind of the glue that holds the other two together. You also have noticed when we, we were looking at uh, the file explorer that there were many other files that were available. Uh, one of those is a PRJ. You can also see that over here uh, in the screenshot on the side of the slide. That stores your projection and coordinate system information. So when ARC reads the coordinates that are stored in the SHP, it's going to reference that PRJ so it knows is it in state plane coordinates, is it in UTM, or is it in WGS84, or whatever coordinate system it happens uh, to be in. That's that PRJ. It tells ARC what those coordinates it reads in the shape file mean. Okay? Uh, you'll also notice an XML file. You can see that down here with the city limit poly dot shape. Right? That's your metadata, that data about your data. When was it created? Who created it? How often is it updated? All of those kind of uh, particulars associated with the shapefile, if somebody has taken the time to do that. And that's a big if. You'll also notice SBNs, SBXs. Those are spatial indexes. That's how ARC uh, GIS knows, as you pan and zoom in the map, what needs to be displayed, what should be shown on your screen. It's also used with spatial searches and queries where we're trying to find you know, how far is this feature from this other feature and those kind of things. Uh, the, those two files are, are used for that. And you'll find others. There's AINs, AIHs, for example, and, and several others that really get generated depending on how you use the data and what software you're using the data within. Uh, but remember, those three, SHP, DBF and SHX are the only required fields, or I'm, I'm sorry, required files that are needed to make a working shapefile. The others, PRJs, XMLs, uh, SBNs, SB, all those are nice to have, but they're not required. Uh, as a matter of fact, some of these, the SBN, SBX, will actually automatically be generated if the software needs them. Right, so you don't necessarily have to, to worry about the those. Uh, PRJs, XMLs, those are manually generated uh, and are certainly nice to have if they exist, but they're not required. Okay? Those three up there are just the ones you absolutely positively have to have. Okay? If you choose to work with shapefiles, um, as I know many folks do, what are some of the pros and cons? Well, the, the big pros are really shapefiles flexibility. The fact that they are usable within multiple applications uh, from the Esri product line with Arc uh, Map, Arc Catalog, ArcGIS Pro, ArcGIS Server, ArcGIS Online, and, and so on, right? They're just a very versatile format uh, 
from that perspective. And like I said, it's not just Esri. Uh, open source solutions like QGIS and GRASS can use shapefiles. Other proprietary applications like Civil 3D and Map 3D from Autodesk can use shapefiles. Uh, Trimble products can can import export shapefiles. So again, they're, they're just very versatile. Uh, and because they've been around for a while, they're fairly stable. Right, so as long as somebody doesn't monkey with the file structure we're just talking about and just uses them within a GIS enabled app, they don't tend to break. Right, now that does lead to a con in that if somebody does go in and monkey with that file structure, right, they rename one of the required files or they delete one of them, that's going to break the shape file. If they realize they can open that DBF file in another application such as Excel or Access, and then uh, make adjustments or changes to the table in one of those applications that could potentially break the shape file. So from that perspective, uh, they can be a little fragile and you need to be aware of that. Another big problem with shape files is people tend to make their own copy. They don't want uh, to work on one on the servers because somebody else is using it and that causes it to be locked because another con list here is that shape files only allow for a single editor. So people make their own copy. So you'll often end up with a copy of the shapefile on the server and then a copy on two or three people's individual computers, right? Which leads to data duplication, uh, data di divergence, which really is not good because then no one's working off the same page and results of different analysis can be different. Uh, there is no real current copy of the data. Uh, so that's bad. And, and all that leads to making them harder to manage. So that unlike a geodatabase where everything's in one container, uh, all of these different files, people, again, not knowing how those files work together, people making copies, it, it just becomes uh, a nightmare to manage uh, shape files uh, quite often because of that ability, ability to make copies, ability for everybody to edit. Uh, again, the multiple file types, it just, it, it just goes on and on um, from a data management perspective. It, it's just hard uh, to, to keep those in line and on track. So um, just, you know, that, just something to keep in mind as you're looking at shape files and considering their use. Uh, I would encourage you, if you're going to be a, a, a more than a one-person GIS shop, that you look at something else like maybe a geodatabase uh, for storing data from that perspective. They are much easier to manage, but said, uh, you just may lose some of your flexibility there. But you know, it's always a give and take. Okay. So with that, that's kind of the down and dirty on shapefiles. Uh, I hope you have gained a much better understanding of how they work and interact together. And please feel free to uh, leave comments or questions down below. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.